So uh, just let's make a short introduction to NF tables. N NF tables is a network specific virtual machine. It's it's very extensible. It currently supports addressing at 32 and, uh, and 128 uh, bit uh, size in the register. The register area is ba basically a scratch pad area where you can place um, whatever information using that alignment and and. We have a very simple bytecode verification. Uh, we don't pass pointers between our what I will define as expressions. So this um, this uh, keeps the, the 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 core verification infrastructure very simple, in the sense that the worst case thing that can happen if you are not using the libraries, and the the utilities, and is that you may get just invalid values and. The virtual machine is basically not going not, not to do anything, but it's not going to crash your kernel. Good. <clears throat> so, um, um, NFT was also comes with, with a Netlink front end. In this case, uh, we implemented for NF Netlink, we implemented a, a batching support that allows us to send um, very large um, messages from user space to kernel space. Uh, specifically, this batch uh, f uh, message is a structure in a way that you can put um, <clears throat> all the table and chains and all object definitions that I show you just uh, thereafter. And uh, that big message with all those um, Netlink messages, so it's a big message with all, all, lots of nested Netlink messages are parsed from um, kernel space and then using that Intermediate using that representation, that uh, TLV representation that Netlink, Netlink provides, with we um, transform that to <clears throat> we transform that to um, the internal object representation. Sorry. And if tables uh, implements a two-phase commit protocol. So basically, um, every update that you apply into your rule set um, it shows up on the packet path in our all or known fashion. So um, if processing a batch, in between the batch there is some error, for example, some invalid um, parameter that was, has been passed to any of, of the expressions that builds, that, that, that builds the rule. Um, um, the batch processing is going to keep going, searching for more errors, and in one go, it's going to, to tell user space how many rules could not be applied. So it's not, it's not that on the first error we are going to bail out. <clears throat> what else? We also have um, better dynamic incremental update support, and that better uh, is related to, with regard to IP tables. Um, so basically, um, and it, it compared to the IP tables representation, we don't have a big binary blob, but we have we are using a linked list to, to represent the rule set, and so this allows us to resolve the problems that we have with uh, with NF tables regarding the the statefulness of uh, matches and targets that we have. So now, if you update your rule set. Um, all the remaining states in your rule set are, are going to stay there. Um, in AP tables, there are some matches that are actually supporting, that are keeping the states on updates, but it's we are using kind of kludgy hacks to get this going, such as passing a pointer to user space and then um, passing it back, if, uh, then expecting that that pointer is going to still go there. I mean, very nasty things just to keep states there. With NF tables, we don't need that anymore. What else? So um, we also are providing currently a user space library. It's this library is uh, the low level one is lib NFT NL. The NL stands for Netlink. And we also have plans to provide a higher level library. This higher level library um, will be based on the NFT, the NFT code. So we are not, we've been discussing for a while this high-level high library that will allow us to, to, to provide a, a more um, abstract representation. 
That part of that abstract, repre abstract representation, I'm going to refer to it in the next presentation about switch depth support. So, um, um, so far what we, what we have available is a leaf NFT ENL. So it's basically a library that, that, that contains um, helpers, functions, and uh, basically maps the objects that, that we can create for, um, from, um, from user space. And um, we also have the NFT command line tool. This command line tool is provides um, um, also a scripting, comes with scripting support, so that I show you in this presentation. And also a interactive shell that is, that doesn't have uh, so far auto completion, but there are already people interested in getting that. And that has sent, that have have sent patches to the mailing list, so we we should we should soon have it. So that that interactive shell is uh, implemented is based on Libre line and and we, so if if we add the missing code, we should really take advantage of all the features that are available in that, that library. What else? So um, since Linux kernel uh, 4.2. We got an ingress hook. Um, this ingress hook is obviously coming um, before the, all the pro routing hooks that we had in that filter. So, and it's happening from layer two. It's, it's just there after. It's just after um, DC ing the DC ingress hook uh, it provides transparent access to the, all the system efficient and pot potential reusage of uh, other net filter binding blocks. But that is not implemented so far, but they they should land uh, anytime soon on the tree. So, what is uh, how how is uh, how how does NFT the, the the user space tool work? It's basically a kind of it's a compiler. Uh, so. So a compiler that, that takes it takes an input from command line, but can also take it from from a file, so so that all the content, all, all the rules that are in, in that file are processed in in a batch. So basically, the the, the NFT compiler it takes um, um, based on the syntax that you can see there. It's this one means um, add, add a new rule. Um, to the net the family that is the one that we are going to uh, focus in this um, tutorial and that is the one that provide the ingress hook so there are added to the table filter this this we I'm assuming already that I created uh, a filter table I show you more information on the table op on the objects uh, just uh, in a few minutes so um, this uh, specifies the table and then we get the chain. In, in this case, there is, we assume there is already an ingress chain. So then uh, we are matching the VLAN ID and an IP source address. And then in case of matching, we are updating a counter. So this generates the following bytecode. It's basically in first place is we are at ingress. We, can, we have to validate that the input interface is um, a, a Ethernet interface, then we check for um, the Ether type on the, um, in the, the Ether type, in this case, we, we, we just look at the compare that says VLAN, this ETHP VLAN, and then after that, um, we are checking for the, um, the VLAN ID. There is a bit bitwise there. Um, expression that bit wise is basically taking the the bits that we need to compare. Um, this is the, the the 12 bits that represent the the VLAN, VLAN ID, and then we are comparing that with uh, the VLAN ID number, the VLAN ID value, and after that uh, we check again in link layer if the next um, ether type. Uh, is uh, IP, and then from the network offset, we are basically, um, with, with the bitwise expression again, we are getting, uh, we are getting rid of the 
bits that we don't want to compare based on this uh, CIDR, and then we compare it, and then we apply the action. So in the, in F tables jargon, everything that is under these these um, uh, square brackets are expressions. So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen expressions. This we use the, the term expression all the time from kernel space, but from user space, we'll, we will make a distinction between um, expressions and statements. So, um, so what is NFT doing as a compiler is from user space is, is parsing the NFT syntax, it's generating the abstract, abstract syntax, syntax tree, and then there is a, an evaluation step just to validate that, to make sure that all the information in that, abstract, in that, that syntax representation, in that abstract representation is correct, otherwise, um, we have a second step to validate or bail out to, to user space in case there is something inconsistent. So after the evaluation, we get that um, decorated abstract, abstract syntax tree, and then we, we compile it. Basically, we generate we generate the the bytecode in the link format, and then we we send it to kernel space. Um, when retrieving the configuration, what we do is. Um, this uh, we get a netlink message, and that netlink message is transformed back to the AST representation. There is a, a step we call post process, it's basically a evaluation step in the other direction, and then we textify the output so the user gets exactly the, the user gets what what it, it has pushed into the kernel. So what objects we we have in NF tables? We have tables, chains, rules. And so if, if, if we want to create a table in the in the net the um, in the net the uh, family, so in this case, um, I'm use foo. It's not a very useful name, but just to to emphasize on the fact that um, you can use any name for your tables now. No, um, and and this table is a container of. Um, base chains and non-base chains, and these um, these base chains and non-base chains uh, they determine uh, the 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 data path of the way the way the packets are um, are going to traverse the the the, the rule set. So um, um, the on the second on the second item we have an NFT add chain. This is basically adding a chain. For the NetDev family, at the full table, and the, the name of this chain is bar. And then between the uh, curly braces, what you have is we define the time of chain. In, in case of ingress, we so far only have the filter type. Then we specify the hook that is ingress. And then we have to indicate the, the device. And then the priority. Priority is on um, sign integer. integer and the sign integer um, determines uh, if you have more chains, what uh, the, the order. And, my, and negative are um, placed before a positive one. And, and then this is just uh, the, the th on the third uh, item, we, we, can have, we are just adding a simple rule to counter all traffic going through that chain. Well, you, can, you can also, as in um, IP tables, you can also define on base chains. Um, the non-base chains, the main difference between non-base chains and base chains is that there is no, um, this part here uh, is missing, so we are not specifying the, the, the hook point. These this non-base chains don't see any traffic unless there is a rule um, indicating a jump or a go-to action to them. Uh, through the, these jumps, basically we can implement uh, the, the similar a similar uh, behavior to we achieve by calling a function, since the the, the jump into a chain means um, evaluate all those rules in that chain, and then after that evaluation, it goes back to the to the to the base chain that keeps evaluating. Um, <clears throat> and then um, what else? Um, we have the. Um, we have the rules, and rules are a composite of expressions. These expressions, um, 
and allows us to, to match any payload and meet information. All the operations are generic, so basically any key that you want to, 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 to use to, um, to, to, to search for a matching, you, you, can, you can use any, any kind of key and any of these uh, operations. You can, uh, you can use the um, different than, uh, you can use a range, um, you can use uh, less, uh, greater than, you can use also um, prefixes. Uh, these prefixes are not only, um, are not only uh, for addresses, you can also use them for meet information. We can use um, bitwise operations, comparisons, and also we can uh, set uh, values. But these set values, that, that one last example should not be there. Are what we call statements. So the statements are, um, in this case, uh, these are mm -hmm. these are I only provide two statement examples. But the, uh, for any NF tables, counters are also statements. So what we have here is uh, um, we are setting the mark value, and we also in the second example, what we are doing is that um, we are setting we are mangling the destination Ethernet address. So we also have the, the payload capability, mangling capabilities. We also have the set of maps. So <clears throat> the first example shows how to um, shows how to um, uh, define a literal sets. Literal sets they um, they are uh, specified between curly braces. So basically, what we have in this first rule is we add a um, we add a uh, to the full table the chain bar. We are adding a set for uh, that is going to match the destination TCP ports for 22, 80, and um, 443. And in case of matching, it's going to map a single counter. And in case this this is literal sets. Um, cannot be updated, so they are constant. In case you need the dynamic updates for your sets, you have to declare a set in this way. Um, so basically, you have to specify uh, to what table you want to, or you want to add the set. Set uh, tables are the, um, the objects higher in the hierarchy of objects, so every Every object is always uh, is is contained by a table. Okay, so this white list object um, it contains um, single IP for addresses, uh, and 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 basically here um, then you, you, we are adding a rule that indicates this indicates that we are adding a rule to the net family food chain bar um, food, food table. Sorry. A bar chain, and then the destination address is what is contained. This add means take the what what is contained in this in this um, set declaration in the whitelist set declaration. Then we have this um, uh, counter increment, and then we are inserting the pack. So how do we add an element to a set? It's simple. We we use the uh, element keyword. So we are adding an element. Oh, this should be, this should not should be AP, this should be net dev, sorry. So net dev, foo, and white list, and these two elements are R to the white list uh, um, set. So initially, sets can be empty, of course, and, and in case um, we want to, we, we can use the, the generic infrastructure available in sets to, um, to, provide, um, to, to, to provide mappings, how the mappings, how these maps work. So basically, this rule here it uh, it says duplicate traffic to a given IP source address. This is also yeah. This example is incorrect because um, we should use two. Should be this should be uh, we can use. Oh no no, it's, it's correct. Sorry. Yeah, this is fine. So I got confused. So basically, this is adding uh, a rule that duplicates all traffic to a given destination based on the. IP source, IP, source, IP source address. So if the IP source address is 1.1.1 .1 .1 is under this uh, network set man, 
the traffic is going to be du duplicated to the ETH0 and in case it's 2.2.2.0 uh, in this network segment, it's going to be duplicated to, to 1. So um, potentially we can, we can use um, any key for, to, to provide these mappings. And not only, we also have these kind of maps, the vertic maps. Vertic maps allows us to jump or to issue and vertic actions, as such an acceptable drop uh, to the matching packet. It, pro it provides very, very fast um, uh, lookups. So in this case, we create two known, three known base chains at the net, the family table foo, the TCP chain, UDP chain, ICMP chain, and this um, basically based on the IP protocol here. Um, in, case of, in case of matching TCP, it's jumping to the TCP chain. So we can build a tree um, of uh, chains where, um, uh, since this is using the set infrastructure, uh, finding the, the jump should be very fast. What else? Um, in sets, we have set, set timeouts. Um, set timeouts, um, they, um, basically the set timeouts consist of um, indicated, the indicated, indicating the, the timeout, whoops, sorry, the timeout, um, the, the timeout uh, statement. This, ta this timeout statement basically indicates uh, the, the lifetime of the elements that are going to be added to the set. This is global thing. So in this case, we to the white list, we are adding IP for addresses and the lifetime for these elements is one hour. So if we add these elements here through the add element command, uh, what it happens is that after that time they, they, they expire. We can also specify a uh, lifetime to elements at, at a very a more fine grain in a more fine grain way. So if we use a flag uh, timeout, um, this flag allows us to indicate the lifetime of the element when we insert it. So we can have different timeouts depending on the element. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. We can also add comments. These comments are useful to 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 um, uh, to remember the purpose of that rule or the element. So, um, in case that we in the, in the first example above, um, we are matching the destination address a dot a dot a dot a encounter. We are increasing the counter accepting. And then there is a comment. The comments also need, need to be placed always at the end of the rule. And um, this is just reminded us that this is a rule match in the Google DNS. And we can also use these comments in in um, in the sent infrastructure. Basically, we um, in this case we create a DNS whitelist set, and we added um, two elements, including the comments corresponding comments, one different comment for each element. Another very powerful feature of NF tables are the concatenations. So um, currently these concatenations uh, are limited to a number of keys that have uh, uh, well-defined data types. So if you try to use them with um, with uh, a data type, uh, with the generic integer data type. I mean, there are there are keys that rely internally. NF tables has um, the, the keys have a specific data type, so we can validate that the input data corresponds to to what the the key expects. So um, currently, um, there are something like sixteen data types and generic data types that are integer. So this is not working for integer so far, but it should be a, a matter of updating uh, the user space code. It's, it's not that we need an update on the kernel for that. So um, the, 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 the goal is that um, in the short run, we'll have support for every, every key. And how this concatenation works is basically we use the dot, um, the dot uh, symbol 
And here, what we are adding is a rule to specify um, at, at, uh, a, a, uh, a, a tuple com uh, with three components, basically, the source Ethernet, Ethernet address, the IP source address, and the TCP destination. So all the elements in this, every, every, every concatenation is an, is an unique element. So in case of matching this source Ethernet address, this IP source address, and this TCP port, we can apply an action. This, we can also combine it with the vertex maps. I mean, every feature that I'm showing in this tutorial can be combined or should be, should be possible to combine. And limitations on this is we don't support, uh, some people ask, ask for ranges here, but that's not, that's not um, easy to implement. We didn't find so far a nice way to make it. So, um, this is it. And we can also, of course, use concatenations in, uh, set declarations. So, this um, this set declaration uh, is indicating that the, the type that is going to the the the, the set uh, contains uh, a tuple with two components. That is the Ethernet address address and the IPv4 address. And um, then using the element command, we can populate the 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 um, the set statements. Well, um, as I said, we we are still working to on on and finishing support for many of the other remaining building blocks uh, that Netfilter already integrates. So so far, um, some of the statements we have apart from. From the basic ones are, for example, the um, the rate limit. Um, the first rule basically um, is matching on uh, traffic uh, data. We can also specify the boost parameter to indicate um, and the 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 number of bytes that you can go over the limit and. And also in the second in the second example, we are showing instead of using uh, the the traffic data, we are using per per packet uh, rate limiting. So in this case, this this indicates that um, that we are we, we will be if matching four uh, packets below this rate of ten packets per second. And you can also use the over keyword to indicate ma to match when the limit is over the specified um, uh, traffic data or, or uh, packet, packet, packets per second and to, to, to perform an action on them. And uh, we can also duplicate and forward traffic. It can be very useful in case that we want to um, have a fast path to, to, to pass packets from ingress to, to a given destination to a given container. And the application for in case that you want to have a you want to inspect uh, the traffic in a different um, in a different uh, system or a different destination. Um, to restore uh, the rule set, and basically what we have is um, oh this is this NFT is. This is this is this is not right. This thing, okay. This NFT is not required. So it, you, you have to the first line of your script should be flash rule in case you want to make sure that there is no any no any object um, in your rule set before you apply the one that you want to do, you are going to have in your in your file. And uh, this NFT list uh, this should be double double greater just to, to concatenate the, the output of it. Another mistake, I fixed it on the slide that I will publish, so you, you have it correctly. And, and then, in case that we want to restore the rules, we use the uh, minus F. Everything that is passed through minus F is applied in an atomic fashion from the kernel. And um, in case uh, you want to monitor updates, um, you can use the monitor command in NFT. Um, and you can also filter based on the kind of objects that you're using. 
So after this this um, quick presentation, I'm going to make some like life examples if the time if the time allows. So we also have support for scripting. This scripting, basically, at the beginning of your file, you have to indicate that um, this file is for NFT, and then you can in case in case you want to include other rule sets, you have to you have to use the include keyword, and then you can also define variables. In this case, it's a set. Uh, composed of several elements, but it could be also a single element. And then, when uh, from your rule set to refer to these uh, variables, you only have to use the dollar and and also you can include comments. So this is a very typical feature that users has been requesting and that they have been implemented in shell scripts in IP tables. But um, doing implemented this in shell scripts is problematic in the sense that you are basically defeating the um, the atomic uh, the atomic rule set updates because in a shell script um, all the rules will be applied one after another and I mean one rule you commit one rule you commit so so it's not going to show up in an atomic fashion to the packet path. So. Um, uh, and and in case you um, you want to um, access the code, I'll show you some code now, so uh, to, so you you understand the basic the basic um, um, the, the basic internals of NFT tables, and there is also access you have access to the library, the low level library, and NFT. And all these are in the git.filter.r repository. That we have a wiki page in case um, you want to contribute, you can drop me a line and I'll create you an account. And also we have a man page. And in case you find bugs, uh, you can you can, you can file them uh, to bookzilla.netfilter.org. So and now I'm going to show you a bit of code. So what is the um, Okay, first I need to connect to <laughs> I'll, I'll increase the font now, okay? Kill, uh, uh, uh. Okay, so so I, I'll show you from the tree then. So oh, front front kernel. Basically, we have um, we have uh, the main the main um, file is NF tables API. Uh, this uh, well, the two main files are the NF tables API, NF tables core. This uh, NF tables API uh, implements the netlink front end and all the object generation and and the comment and our path. And, and from core, you, what you can find is basically the um, um, the uh, the uh, packet matching engine. So let's see if this loads. Otherwise, I'll fall back to my own copy. It seems to today internet is not working. It's not working fine. Good. So, so, so let's let's have a look at the um, core function. This NFT do chain is the core uh, packet classifying function. 
So basically here what we have is um, we have um, the tracing the, the new tracing the, the tracing code uh, for uh, to trace uh, rule set matching that we also have support in F tables. We have it in two fashions. Uh, we have the generic onion infrastructure that has been implemented that provides the tracing uh, through another link. Another one that is um, compatible with the one that, that we used to have in IP tables. And uh, that is basically um, printing messages to the um, to the log um, to the log uh, buffering. Uh, so what we're doing here is that um, is initially um, we fetch the current. Uh, we have to fetch the generation cursor. This cursor indicates what is the current generation. We have. Uh, two possible generations: the one that is current and the, the one that is uh, uh, that is in the past or in the future. For that, we use all the time the same the same bit. So with two with only two bits, we we implement the generation infrastructure that we have. So basically, here we are iterating over over the the um, the rule sets the rule set that the rules are attached to a chain, and in a likely case that the rule is inactive, we skip it. So in case that this is a rule that the user is performing an, an update and it's not in the current generation. Otherwise, um, and we iterate over the list of expressions that are part of our rule. And we have here um, an optimization to to uh, to perform comparison faster without using main compare, main compare, and and also to fetch um, a short data that is uh, smaller than uh, 24 bits, and otherwise we fall back on the generic uh, evaluation that that is um, that is part of this expression. I'll show you I'll show you how ex a expression looks like. So basically, expressions looks like. Let's have a look at the comparison. So this is the comparison expression. Um, this is the the binary layout of the comparison expression. This is part of the rule. This is not exposed to user space. And then we have an eval function. This eval functions. Uh, this eval function. Um, uh, it's basically the one that is called from from the packet path. In this case, we are comparing just to make sure, it, just to uh, for, for all these uh, operations. And in case of mid match, we just stop uh, searching for more matches in this in this rule. So then after that, we have the. Uh, we have usually a init code. This init code it basically parses uh, the netlink attributes and and represent them into the binary in the internal binary layout. And then we have a dump function just to uh, to to put back information to user space in in case the user requests um, requests a, a, a rule set. And then we have this expression ops is to register this, um, this expression. This, in this case, we have a fast init because we are using, that is another CMP fast ops, because we can overload, overload um, expressions. So we, one single expression have, can have different flavors. These different flavors are determined through this select ops um, callback. So this select op, ops uh, operation, this select op based on what we get from, from user space, from the Netlink API, is going to decide uh, what, what uh, implementation of the comparison is going to use in case that the comparison is, uh, the, the, the amount of data that we want to compare is less than U32, we use the fast comparison, otherwise we use main compare. And this is the CMT type. So we want, we always have one expression type, but a expression type can have multiple, multiple uh, operations. And then basically what we have here is just the registration and unregistration of the expressions in case we 
Okay, going back to the to have a look at the API. This implements the Netlink front end. So we have infrastructure to um, to register register families. We currently have six families: IP, IPv6. We have INET family. This INET family is a family that basically sees both IPv4 and IPv6 traffic from uh, any of the existing IPv4 and IPv6 hooks. Is there, just to simplify um, configurations you, um, for dual stack uh, scenarios. So we have IP, IPv6, uh, bridge for, for bridging. Um, we have uh, ARP, we have NetDeb, and I think I said everything, okay. So um, we have the infrastructure to look up for the families. We have context, and we, the, here we have the transaction object. Transaction object is basically allocating uh, a transaction object. This, con this stores the, the um, message type that has triggered, the lending message type that has triggered this transaction, and context uh, information that is useful when we apply to rules from the commit path. We have also infrastructure to register bait chains and register them. Uh, to unregister, register hooks, basically base chains, register one hook um, into the filter infrastructure, and lots of uh, functions just to add, delete objects. We have these functions that basically allows us to, to check if, if the object is currently active, is it, is, if the object will be active in the next generation, if we have to, uh, if we want to activate the object in the next generation, if we want to activate it, deactivate it in the next generation, basically this means that it's going to be delete. Or uh, in case we want to clear the generation mask, once um, uh, we have applied the rule set from the commit path. Uh, as I said, lots of functions to operate with objects. And then we have, we have the specific, um, Functions for to handle tables. It's lots of quite a lot of boilerplate netlink code. Just to just as a scheme to uh, avoid exposing the the binary layout and having more flexibility to change it in the future. And what else I can show you? So this is basically lots of net, netlink code. I'll, I'll go straight forward to the commit phase, okay? And the upward phase. We don't have much more time, 10 minutes, so. Oh, uh, uh, uh. So I'm going to show you the commit path and the board path. And then if you have any question, you let me know. So, um, let's have a quick look. So this is the commit, the commit step. So um, we have in the, in the two-phase commit protocol that we have, basically we have a preparation phase and, and, and the activation phase. The, the, in the preparation phase, we just um, uh, create all the objects that, that we need to, to add, or in case that they need to be, they, they need to be deleted, we, we, mark them, we, we mark them as objects that will, be, um, that will be removed in the next generation, okay? So in the preparation phase, we add all the, uh, all the objects that we need, and we also deactivate uh, or mark for deactivation in the next generation. And basically what we do is we take a copy of the uh, next generation cursor, and we use Synchronize ICU to make sure that all packets has left previous generation before we start uh, um, removing uh, all objects. And then we trade over the commit list to, depending on the transaction type that is based on the Netlink uh, message type, uh, we are going to uh, make effective the, the changes that we, we did in the preparation phase. So this is basically um, uh, in case of new rules, we're just clearing, clearing, um, the uh, generation generation mask notifying the rule through through netlinks through this um, and then destroying the tra transaction object. 
We also have for the abort path, in case that we have a object that is invalid or that is not, that the kernel, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't go through the, um, the kernel um, uh, validation code, or through the, the netlink validation, what what it happens is that we have to to undo what what we what we've done. So in case of new rules, for example, what we did in the preparation phase is creating the rule object and inserting it into the list. So for the new rule, um, what we have to do is we have to delete that rule object that is not active. And then later on, after we have the abort release phase, where we get rid of all these memory areas by releasing them. OK. So basically, with, with the NF, NF, um, NF tables API, we have the core Netlink front end. Uh, the NF tables core, we have the, uh, the packet matching engine, and then with, with, the, with the NFT underscore and a given name, we implement the expressions. So the expressions, they provide the instruction set for a virtual machine, and basically with all those components, we have, we have, the, virtual, we have, we have all the virtual machine of the, that the NF tables provide. So um, that's basically it. Do you have, do you have any questions? Okay, here he says we have five minutes more, right? Okay. Okay, if, I, if, if there are no more questions, I'm, I'm done. Thanks. <laughs>